The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Today is Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. Thanks so much for joining us. It is the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre. And most people, this may be, for many people, this may be the first time they've heard of it. And that is because of something that I've been saying on the show for some time now. And that is the oppressors never want the history to be told by the oppressed ever because when the history is told by the person who suffers underneath the oppression of another group or another person or whatever they have been when that when a group has been on the receiving end of the oppression of a system and they survive it i think that suggests that black folks have something to say i think that should be the signal that not all of us It's not categorical. We have our morons. We have our village idiots. (laughs) But we have had to survive both your capitalism and your white supremacy. We have had to survive America's infiltration of our communities at every level. We have had to survive the reactions in our own communities, the reactions to white supremacy that we may not very well be proud of, but they are themselves a reaction to white supremacy. My father was a reaction to white supremacy. He did the best that he could do in this system based on what this system would allow a black man to be able to do. And back in the eighties, you know, when he was raising me, when I was born, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't nearly as bad as what his father went through. Or my mother's father went through being chased out of new Orleans, Louisiana, because he got into a fist fight with a white man at a bar and having to take the family out of Louisiana and move them North so that he wouldn't get killed. Because if that black man who did that for my mother's family is anything like me, we care about our children. And what we have come to in this country is a point in history Listen, I'm not trying, I I just, anyway, the point is really simple. I don't want to get too tied up in my own thoughts. But y'all, black folks have been trying and having to survive this country at every single level. We've had to. It was just a requirement. We had to survive your slavery. (laughs) We had to survive your Jim Crow. We had to survive. I mean, and I'm not saying anything that people haven't. Known. I mean, it, it's it's we have entire universities dedicated to what you guys did to us. And now you're afraid that the history could be told by the oppressed. <laughs> you fear that we are going to see you for what we do. We see you for what you have been And while some of us, some of us are cool enough to actually like, no, for real, (laughs) some of us see, we still see the good and the humanity 
in the in the brilliance of some of the ideas and some of the entertainment and you know me I'm like a Doctor Who fan I'm a Star Trek fan you know I love you know I love the aspiration of the greater humanity that exists across all of us like there's so much more to us collectively as a human species <laughs> we're dope man <laughs> we are we all have the magnificent gift of sentience we all have this un- unbelievably be- but the point is is that we have a system we have a system that is built on the very worst of humanity we have a system that is built on the very worst of humanity we reward greed we reward individualism we absolutely built the system out of the very worst (laughs) it's almost like you guys thought that the bible said that the rejection of money was the root of all evil and so you figure like you call yourselves Christians and then you say, I'm going to get out here and I'm going to engage in the system based on the very thing that our Bible said we should reject, which is the love of money. <laughs> and you created a system out of that. And you wonder why. And you wonder why in this advanced civilization that we have where the technology and the research around vaccinations are so <laughs> The science is there, but yet we have these childish gaslighting conversations about, you know, uh, uh, we, we, we can't get to a level of herd immunity in this country because of the level of stupidity that is just drenches every level of everything that we do. We could be on our way. We could have 600,000 people did not have to die. 600,000 people did not have to die, but it's because of the ignorance But more importantly, like setting the ignorance aside, it is the greed. It is the greed. So anyway, um, we. We. Black folks have been trying to do this. Black folks have been trying to do it on your terms for a very long time. We survived your slavery. We survived your Jim Crow. We survived all of the very worst that you, the literal very worst that you had to offer. We are black folks are sitting seated in empire. And you, you do understand that the greatest oppression now, the stuff that we're doing abroad is an empire. Anyway, that's a whole different conversation. I just need y'all to know that what we see domestically is a reflection of what happens internationally. And the reason that they are able to bring down the, the, the troops to to Ferguson, Missouri and bring down the troops to to Minneapolis and and they crush us. The reason they, they're able to do that is because they learn how to do it first by bombing other nations, black and brown nations. We have we we have violence spread across the globe. In the name of greed. Therefore, we have the violence that is spread across our country for which black people have had to survive every iteration of your latest barbarity. (sighs) So if we manage to survive all that, wouldn't you think that there's something black folks got to say? (laughs) Not all of us. Some of us, I mean, you could like whatever, like I'll leave that up to you to debate who you should listen to, and who you shouldn't and and all that kind of stuff. I'm not here to be the Negro decipher for you to understand exactly the right black Negro to listen to. Nah, nah, that is not my job. Um, All I know is that there is a brilliance that has come out of our experience surviving your barbarity. And I mean, I mean, I might as well, whatever (laughs) y'all know, I'm already, y'all know I'm crazy. And, and, you know, I don't have to apologize for that. Um, If we keep going on the trajectory that we're going, we are going to destroy ourselves. And to be quite honest with you, the more I think about it, the more I think about it, it's not just black folks here. Um, It's, it is brown folks across the globe it 
there, it is everybody on the face of this planet who has had to be a survivor, survivor of what you celebrate. See, white supremacy celebrates Christopher Columbus. There's an entire, their entire in groups of indigenous people who are the survivors of Christopher Columbus. You all celebrate the founding fathers. We are the survivors of the nation that they erected on our backs. And now y'all got the nerve to tell us, oh, you know, pull yourselves up by your own bootstrap. <laughs> we did. In Tulsa, Oklahoma. 1921. We played your game. And we got so good at it so quick that I'm quite sure some of you, well, not you. I No, I'm sorry, not you. Not you listening. And quite possibly not your ancestor because the great majority of you um, have only been here for like three generations. So perhaps maybe it's not your ancestors because you guys just came through Ellis Island like three generations ago. But my family's bones are buried. In Franklinton, Louisiana. My father's bones are buried. Of course, my father's, you know, that's one generation, two generations, my grandfather, um, uh, three generations, my great grandfather. I, I knew I didn't know him, but I I know the pictures, George and Emma Harvey. You know. We have had to survive all of that. I don't know my father's father. I mean, I know my father's father, obviously, my granddaddy, um, but I didn't know his father. Like my, I don't know on that side. On my on my mother's side, the thing that was most important to my great grandfather was out of everything that he accomplished. I mean, he actually was able to get land. I mean, it was amazing the amount of land that my great grandfather and your great grandfather, black, but like our great grandparents, they played your game. And they were good at it. And that's how Mary McLeod Bethune was able to to build a school out of like a dollar and 50 cents. Oh, I got it right. I had to Google it. I had to be sure. I had to be sure because I can't I can't tell the story of Mary McLeod Bethune and 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 mess that up because, you know, my fellow Wildcats, like James, who's on the morning show with me, he would rip me to shreds. <laughs> but it's that interconnectivity of our greater community. The, the blackness, man, it is the it is the it is what I saw on my own Roland Martin today where everyone was in Oklahoma and I had the I had the privilege of being on that broadcast and up walked um, Jesse Jackson. And you could see that he had run the race and he was weary and that and that he wasn't as he wasn't as physically sharp as he had been when it, in his youth. But man, that that Jesse's brain was sharp as it could ever be. And it was almost like his body could not contain the brilliance that his brain was trying to convey on Roland Martin show tonight. And I was, I was behind the scenes getting to watch that firsthand. That was dope. And Roland wrote, you know, Roland, Roland is, is a cool dude. Y'all he, that man, he gives people opportunities. He don't ask nothing of you. His team is genuine and they just doing the damn thing out there. It was fun. It was fun. But seeing, but seeing Jesse there with all of his brilliance and it was only limited by his, his physical constraints. But what he was saying, whew, go listen for yourself. But I know that there have, there have been multiple reactions from the black diaspora, the black and brown people across the globe who have had to be survivors of the very thing that you celebrate. You celebrate these systems. We have had to be survivors of this system. You celebrate capitalism. We have had to be the survivors of capitalism all across the globe. It's not just the black experience. It is the experience of the oppressed. Because y'all can't even y'all don't even want to teach the history. You are so terrified of the history being taught you. Well, I was going to say you cowards. But might I offer to you that. You fear a reaction from the black community because you know what you have done. 
you know, maybe not your, maybe not your grandparents, but, 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 but this country, you know, maybe I'll just three generations in and you don't have any responsibility to what happened to black people or the natives in this country or marginalized people. But you know what? We are view. We are standing in full view of what America is doing to other nations presently. We are witnesses to what America does on the global stage. And there's a lot of times where we're just like, mm, whatever, got other stuff to take care of. And I firmly believe that one of the reasons black people were able to survive this system, no matter how many times you try to destroy us. And by right, we should have been destroyed because you put the entirety of this this empire on our shoulders. And we built it and we carried it. And we even give you the spice of life. We we give you the soul of it. Like you can't you can't get enough. You can't get enough of our rhythm of our words, of our soul. And we have survived. And the thing is, is, is that I think a lot of people, a lot of the reactionaries, because there's, there is most certainly, I don't want anybody to be like, we got to be really cognizant of something. There is a reactionary movement, a political, actual, factual reactionary movement that is coalescing across the globe. Across the globe, there is a reactionary, a pan reactionary movement. There is a pan reactionary movement that is forming and they are well funded. They don't like none of us. <laughs> you know, they don't like you're black. We don't want you. We, you know, you're gay. We don't want you. You, you know, you're whatever. You're a woman. We don't want you. You're a woman who, who wants to have a, the right to choose. We don't want you like there's there is a. You know, there is a re, a true reactionary movement all across the globe that is forming and coalescing and they're well funded. And their agenda is to preserve the power structure as it is, because here until this point, the power structure has been taking care of them. Or at least it gave them the vision and the pipe dream. A lot of dummies here in America. Sorry, folks, but it is what it is. A lot of people here in the United States of America who like to think that they are a part and beneficiaries of Western civilization, but you were a serf. You weren't Alexander the Great, okay? <laughs> I just want to be clear. I know I'm mixing up my dispensations, but you you know what I'm saying, right? Y- y'all think, you think what you see on TV going to be you one day. What's the matter in Kansas? <laughs> That's what they really believe. And because that belief has been so entrenched and locked into their thinking, there are white people who are much better off being in complete and absolute solidarity with black folks. But you can't because, you know, like like. um, What's my dude name? What's James Baldwin? Good Lord. My mind escaped me for a second. I'm getting old. James Baldwin talked about that Western Union worker who didn't could not even handle a check that he was going to send but at least she was white and so there's an entire subset of of whiteness in on across this globe where you have been on the receiving end of all of the same systems that we have but you had the ad you had the advantage you were you were white but you still poor and if you could just get rid of your race, because there's some some people who are like, oh, there's racism, though, because this is called this is cancel culture. Oh, this is uh, all that stuff. All that. Whatever. That's be- whatever. What what did Jordy LaForge say from um, <laughs> from Star Trek? Um, he said it's not cancel culture. It's consequence culture. And that's what you all fear the most. You fear consequences. And yeah, I mean, I understand if if I had done the shit y'all did, excuse me, I, I told my friend I wasn't going to cuss no more. My bad, y'all. <laughs> if we had done the stuff that, you, but we've seen, we, if we had done some of the, the, the barbarity, the barbaric things that you have done in the name of greed. Yeah, I'd be scared too. I would be. So I get it. But. Might we offer to you from the black delegation the fact that we have had to survive and the way we survive was through community. We survive through community. 
We survive by picking up the shortcomings of our brother and our sister and our non-gender conforming individual. We saw their shortcomings, but we didn't we didn't try. What does Stevie want to say? He said uh, she doesn't use her love to make him weak. She uses her love to make him strong. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, you have, you know, it, it is we, we learn that concept from wherever we learn it from. I probably, you know, Stevie Wonder or the barbershop. Right. And so our community, we we picked up the shortcomings within our community and we use that collectivism as black people in the United States in the seat of empire where the empire is committing atrocities across the globe. But within the United States of America, the most sophisticated police state ever devised in the course of human history has been brought down to bear on black folks since 1619. And we're still here. (laughs) Ah. And we're still here. Not all of us, you know, you could choose your reaction. I'm not here to be the arbiter of which black reaction is the correct reaction. We got enough of those arguments going on. That's not, I am not here to be, to. I'm just speaking, you you came to my podcast. (laughs) So I'm here, you know, I'm here to hear myself speak, I guess. (laughs) It's not that many people download the podcast. It's cool. It's cool. But um, I know one thing. If we as a species are do not adopt a spirit of collectivism and reject greed. As a species, the very thing that Western like, OK, let me let me give this one last thing and then I'm going to be out of here because the best way to do it is through an illustration. Um, My father. I don't talk about him often, but maybe I do. I don't keep track of it. My father was a reaction. He worked so many jobs. He worked hard. He had two jobs at any given point in time. He was a preacher. And then because preaching didn't pay enough money, he wasn't a prosperity pastor. (laughs) Prosperity. What's that? Most black preachers, they got me now, you know, I know y'all think of prosperity. You you think of preaching, you think of prosperity. Nah, man, most black preachers out here, they living on the edge, just trying to just trying to speak truth to power in their community. And that was my father. That's that's who he was. And and, um, he always had he was always working so hard and he was working so hard that at my age, by by child number five, because <laughs> you know, there's a lot of kids in that house. My father, by the you know, by the fifth child, me, you know, he was busy. But that man worked so many hours to make sure I had everything I ever needed. Now I didn't get a lot of what I wanted. <laughs> but he and my mother, and where they fell short, in the few places where they fell short, we had the community. The community girded us up and we replicate that model over and over and over and over again in the black community. And this is how we were able to survive not only your slavery. I mean, I mean, y'all, y'all are colonizing our food. Y'all are gentrifying our food. Now y'all like the dark meat. (laughs) Y'all going to charge us more for the dark meat because you now find it came over. Now you had made a, uh, you know, but that's not, like I said, this is not germane just to black people, but this is a pattern of colonization across the globe. You're not only, you don't only, you don't only need our land and our, and our wealth. You need our talent. You need our flavor. You need our soul. You need all that. Now y'all even taking our food. (laughs) Can't have nothing. And y'all want us to celebrate Christopher Columbus. Like the we're here. <laughs> anyway, that was a leap. I made a big leap there. I hope you follow that. <laughs> anyway, I just, I just know. I mean, I'm, I'm so crazy. I'm crazy. But, but I just know that there is a solution inside of the minds of the people who have had to survive your systems, because by definition, we have had to survive your systems and, and we have. And the real question that this country is faced, the United States of of America very specifically is faced with is how will it proceed? Will it proceed under the auspices of white supremacy? Because that's where this is how you got to where you are now. And this is why this is why those white supremacist terrorists marched up the steps of January 6th. Let's just get down to it. They marched up because they feel they 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 feel the ever creeping approach of black power. And we're not talking about 
black power in the streets, black power. We're talking about black power, like for real, in charge of the institutions. This is why all of a sudden you have Tucker Carlson who is out there yelling, oh, oh, the woke military. Everything is about the woke military because what they have to assault most of all, they don't they don't care. Listen, I love my HBCU. I love, you know, they don't care if we have universities. They fine with that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like they they would they would burn them down if they didn't like what we if if. But you understand what I'm saying. They don't care if we have universities. This is not to say that they would not attack them, but they don't care if we get politicians. This is not to say that the system would not attack those politicians because it will. But they don't care if we get black politicians in power. What they really care about is what drives these institutions. And the system that all of our institutions were built on it's literally white supremacy and capitalism. Can't leave out capitalism. I know Democrats don't like to talk about, you know, you know oh, he's not, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. We've had to survive your capitalism as well. And black capitalism is cool. You know, I'm not here to, 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 to just enough people who are parsing those differences, but I do know this is that any system that's built on greed will destroy itself. It's only a matter of time. Ah, but on the good note, people finally are knowing what Tulsa, Tulsa race massacre. They erased it from history for the first, you know, hell for the first hundred years. (laughs) It was only in 2020 that the state of Texas decided to teach about the Tulsa Tulsa race massacre in, in schools. Yeah, so they erased the history for damn near 100 years. But now at least, you know. It's it's light to be in broke, but what about Camilla, Georgia? You know, we know about Rosewood. There was a movie, but what about all the other cities that your your big your hatred? No, it's even more than that. It was your ability to look at another human being and say, "I don't really think much of you at all. I'm going to hang you from a tree." Do you know how deeply rooted the rot? has to be in that person's soul to be so ruthless with another human being that they could sit there. And I have to say it because what kind of creature can sit there and lynch thousands, thousands of us, same one that enslaved us. It is the dehumanization of our, of our fellow mankind, of our fellow human, of our fellow person that I think is by far the greatest threat to humanity. Because as we think of it historically, from what this country did to black folks, every step of the way, consider that our empire is doing that across the globe. And consider that as we begin to get representation in these systems are we really truly taking the collectivist community i'm talking to black folks now are we taking the collectivist spirit that helped us survive so that when your mama you know had to go to work your neighbor who was a good person and your mama could try, if if it wasn't for that connection in that small city or that big city for that matter where she was able to get help from the community then she would not have been able to survive and then the, that little child that she was growing and rearing would not be able to survive at the level at the level and to aspire and to grow and to be and so that child that child is the product of the community if we don't get that very simple reality ingrained in our systems, <laughs> how do we expect to survive as a species? So I don't know. That's all. I just think that not only black folks, but this system that you all celebrate so mightily. That the people who have had to survive your system might very well, it's just a theory, they might very well have some ideas about how we can continue to thrive and survive collectively instead of individualistically, which absolutely has us on a path to destruction. 
See you next time.